So recently, someone reached out to me with an incredible idea, and I want to tell you about that in a moment, because it involves you. But first, I just want to say, holy shit, you guys came out in force not only to support me and give me a fighting chance at making this weird and wonderful role of content creator my full-time job, but also just to say, hey dude, relax, we'll come back and watch whatever you make, which is just absolutely unbelievable and amazing. So I just wanted to say from the bottom of my scripted heart right now, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this video is for you guys, the fans of this channel, and this video is also a bit of an experiment. The swell of support from you lot means I can relax about the algorithm and chasing views, and gives me some confidence to make a 3D printing video that I truly want to make. And if this goes well, then maybe now I can just save those big moonshot videos for every now and then. So have a look at this. We got the lychee files, which is bloody awesome, so we can come in here and edit these if we want, uh, which I want to because I prefer Rather than this kind of raft. Actually, this one's rough's okay. It's got it's got a little bit of a lip on it. That's good. So the talented modeler behind these cool little walkers here, Shane from Dungeons and Dreadnoughts, reached out to me on Patreon and wanted to know if there was any way he could help. And he floated a few ideas, and one of them really jumped out at me more than anything. And that idea was he wanted to know if he could donate STL files. And I thought that's that's incredibly interesting. And it got the gears in my head starting to turn like, holy shit. There might be a great opportunity here for me to monetize this channel and make it sustainable. And at the same time, give more artists a voice on this little platform that I've built here. And so what we're doing here as, as, a, as our little experiment, and Shane, I can't thank you enough for this idea and for your donations, is you can get these models right now. If you join the Once in a Six Side Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon or YouTube membership, you can get these files right now till the end of this month, which is just absolutely incredible. I, like, I, like, okay, I knew I wanted to have STL files at some point as a rewards thing. I tried to work out something with my mate Isaac, who's, you know, a talented artist, and he's appeared here on this channel before. He helped me with the, the squig amp and that whole thing. Um, but, but Isaac's heart was never really in miniatures, which, you know, fair enough. And, and I don't want to put pressure on him to make something he doesn't want to make. Um, so, we, you know, we're not going to go down that road with Isaac. I can kind of design some stuff myself, but then having the time to do it on top of making the videos and everything else is just this way too hard. But I love this idea. Like if, if any creators in the community want to donate STL files to the once in a six side Patreon, YouTube membership and, uh, and buy me a coffee membership options, then it can be a reward for people to join that month. And then I can just make an easy video like this every month and just highlight the artists and talk about their cool models. And so any artists you want to get involved with this, please um, email me, get in touch and, and let's, let's do this. Like, I'm hopeful that this could be a really good win-win opportunity for yeah both the channel to keep the channel alive and sustainable. And then, yeah, just also for artists to have um, some exposure to uh, the, the 3D printing uh, hobby tabletop miniature audience that we have here. You guys. <laughs> so if you do sign up as a member and get yourself these files, you're also going to get yourself a nice, juicy 30% discount code for all of Shane's stuff. Uh, and Dungeons and Dreadnoughts has some pretty incredible models. I mean, like, look at this. It, it's a it's a fucking Warlord Titan. You can get this Warlord Titan for 30% off. Just saying. <laughs> and a bunch of other, like all this cool stuff here too. So, so thank you, Shane. Uh, and also my apologies uh, because in this video, I call you Sean a couple of times by mistake. Because when I was record, I was so excited. I started recording uh, and we'd only spoken like a couple of times, you know, and so, <laughs> so I hadn't quite locked it into my brain yet. So I got your name wrong a couple of times. Please forgive me. But yeah, please enjoy this video. We're going to, we're going to print and paint these cool walkers. Uh, I'm also going to give you, we're also going to do a quick little review of this thing. Nothing too crazy. And what else? I don't know. Let's just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> One more quick announcement before we jump into the print and paint. A couple of other artists have caught wind of this little initiative um, ahead of this video's release. And so I'm very excited to tell you that we also have available for members this month, the Ratman Plager from Imp3D Sion and the Infernal Sorceress from Eldritch Tabletop. Both of these talented artists have a host of incredible fantasy themed sculpts to choose from on their My Mini Factory stores. So do check them out. Thank you very much, Imp3D, Sion, and Eldritch Tabletop. Really appreciate you guys so much. And a quick word to any artists who do want to donate. Obviously, for this video that I make each month, the format is not set in stone. And also, I could not possibly guarantee a print and paint for every single model that gets contributed. 
But at best, I should be able to do this and and like, hey, check it out. Look what look what you're getting this month. <laughs> like a you know like like your typical sponsored YouTube content or whatever. All right, let's do this print and paint. This is interesting. His choice of orientation for these cannons is not necessarily ideal. If we sort of look at these as they print, you know, it starts here like this, connected to this tip, and then jumps across to this one. And then essentially we have this sort of large surface area that is parallel to the build plate curing. And so this is curing on the FEP and then trying to rip off. And so it's, if it was me, I would have done it, you know, something like this. And that would print pretty great. And actually, let me, I'm curious about something. If we hit V and we make those vertical, so we select all those and then we hit V. Oh God, hang on. Control R, recalculate. R, shift R, alt R, control, shift R, shift, control. Oh God, hang on. <laughs> so I, I would have supported this in that orientation or something like that. Just so that way, you know, as these layers print, that surface area is dramatically reduced and the supports have to do a lot less work. And that's just going to lead to less things like scarring or like weird warping. Warping's a big one. You would probably, on the final print, you'd see like a kind of like a saw blade type warping effect as this tries to pull away from the FEP and deforms. But I mean, it, it's probably fine. So we're going to we're going to send it. I'm using Anycubic Photon Workshop and we're using an absolutely brilliant resin. It's ultra high speed. No, the high speed one's terrible. Yeah, don't buy the high speed resin if you're looking for a good miniatures resin because uh, a good miniatures resin, it is not. It would be good for like, if you're doing big artsy pieces or maybe if you're maybe like rapid prototyping, you wanna get stuff printed really quick and just check your dimensions and, and your fit fit and finish and that sort of thing. It might be good for that. Miniatures, definitely not. Uh, but yeah, we're using Tough Resin Ultra and this stuff is absolutely just brilliant. It's got some nice flex to it. This particular one is clear, so that's cool. Print your flight stands and stuff in it. Yeah, really enjoying this resin. It's very, very good. I don't think you can get it yet. Uh, I think this might be an early version that Anycubic have forwarded me, but it should be available soon. And I'll try and make sure that there's an affiliate link in the video description for you guys. Of course, if you don't know how affiliate links work, you just make the purchase. It costs no more than it would otherwise, but because you used my link, Anycubic gives me a small cut for encouraging you to go buy it. It's a commission, basically. So anyway, we don't have renders, that's cool. I would prefer a render. <laughs> Give us a render, man. Just, just right here, just right there. Like, like uh, we take this image and stick it just right there. So when I'm browsing through my big collection of STL files and I see the folder named OE5 Alpha Walkers, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm looking for a walker maybe. Or is that a Sentinel? I don't know. Come in here and then bam, straight away. Oh yeah, there's the, uh, the render. I know exactly what's in here. That's cool. Man, super cool. <laughs> But yeah, love the lychee files, then we got the pre-supported, then we got the unsupported. If you want to do some like digital kit bashing or something with these files, there you go. Lovely. Hey, little tip for you guys. If you don't get a preview like this, but at least for the Windows users amongst you anyway, if you don't see these previews, all you got to do is come to the, uh, the shitty Microsoft store. Yeah, there's a great little app. It's called Microsoft 3D Builder. And you're going to install that here in the Microsoft store. And that's going to give you these little previews. And if you don't know, 3D Builder is a great, great little program that's completely free and you can use it to do some digital kit bashing if you want. And there's a whole video here on the channel if you haven't seen it, all about that. So yeah, super fun. And actually a little small tangent, you can actually do these kind of operations inside of Lightsheet now as well. So for example, I should probably do a video on this, hey? But yeah, you can come in here and maybe take a couple parts, bring them into Lightsheet. And then there's actually a planar cut tool, which is super, super cool because you can drag this plane through the model and adjust it however you want. And basically once you apply, Lightsheet will crash and you will go back to using Microsoft 3D Builder. <laughs> what that should have done, let me show you in 3D Builder. What that should have done is edit, split. The same thing gives you a plane. You just adjust that how you want. And this is a cutting tool. Do you want to keep this side? Do you want to keep that side? Or do you want to keep both? Hit split. And then there we go. Look at that. How cool is that? All right. 
we're way off track. What are we doing? We're printing an Alpha Walker. I've calibrated this resin to this machine and I arrived at a 2.25 second normal layer exposure value. Don't copy that, calibrate for yourself. I just released a great guide if you didn't see that on how to do calibration. Highly recommend you check it out. And if you've already seen it, highly recommend you check it out again. <laughs> so anyway, let's just grab all of this stuff. And I think, yeah, I love this. So we got turret right, thigh right, turret left, thigh left. That's great because we don't have to mirror anything. That always frustrates me so much when like I slice something and I print it and then I realize like, oh wait, fuck, I don't have enough parts. I'm missing a leg or I'm missing a rocket launcher or, or something. It's so annoying. So I love when people include the mirrored models for us because it's just, we can just literally just drag all these files into our slicer, arrange them on the build plate, hit slice, send it to the printer and have a good time. Provided that uh, Dungeons and Dreadnoughts have done a good job supporting these files, which I'm sure he has. I'm sure this, these are excellently, brilliantly supported. Do you reckon we can fit another one on here? I think we can. I think we can do two. We maybe don't have to print the guns twice because let's see, we could have one with missile launchers and we could have one with rockets because these are these are arms, right? And this is another another reason why renders are so good because we got a render here. I can reference that. And, and yes, yeah, so I can see like double uh, cannons, less cannons or something on this one, double missile launchers on that one. So let's do exactly that. You probably even mix and match. You could have one, one cannon, one missiles, but I like this look. Actually, I particularly like the, the look of this, but yeah, we'll do both. We'll do missiles. We'll do one missiles and we'll do one of that. They last can No, they're auto cannons, aren't they? Because they've got these drums up here. Yeah. But then they've got the sort of the iconic slanted uh, tip of the barrel that you see on LAS cannons. But I think there's a probably auto cannons. Hey, these are firing big, heavy slugs. Yeah. Look at these cool infantry too. You're not going to get these infantry. You're going to have to go buy them from Dungeons and Dreadnoughts if you want them. But if you join the Once in a Six side, buy me a coffee or Patreon or YouTube memberships, uh, you will enjoy these files this month. So th again, thank you, Dungeons and Dreadnoughts. Just, you, you're incredible. Such a great idea. Everyone go subscribe to Dungeons and Dreadnoughts Tribes on My Mini Factory or pa Patreon if you prefer. Buy all his models and I'm sure he's probably going to give me some discount code or something for you guys. Help support this great artist and all that good stuff. So anyway, now I'm going to duplicate everything that's not the guns. I like the simplicity of this. It's just the hip joint, thighs. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not even a hip joint. It's just the, the torso, thighs and the feet. Wait, what is this thing? Ankle. Ah, okay, I do have to do some duplicating. Glad I caught that. I wish this uh, slicer had hotkeys. One of my favorite things about Lychee, and it's a simple thing, but it's such a such a good feature, is and, and every bit of software should have it, is hotkeys and being able to assign your own hotkeys. Unless, have they added it? I, I doubt it. I doubt they've added it. Yeah, you got general, model repair, and slicing. Uh, Nothing here at all about bloody hotkeys. That sucks. I do have contacts at Anycubic. I wonder if I complain about it, if they will actually listen. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Anycubic is such a hard company to get in contact with though, so maybe. And I don't mean from a customer support perspective. Anycubic's customer support, in my experience, is excellent. And, and it's like the one company I can actually speak to their customer support because uh, before I even had this YouTube channel, I, you know, I had an Anycubic machine and I needed them to send me replacement parts and they, they did it. They just, all I had to do was like reach out to their support, create a ticket. And after that, what do we do? We, they wanted a video. They just, it was the little, the, the touch screen was buggy. Oh, and one of the fans started sounding really horrible. So it was two separate occasions I had to reach out and yeah, both times they were just like, give us a video and then I gave them a video and straight away they were like, okay, what's your shipping address? And um, yeah, they sent me, sent me replacement parts. So fantastic customer service. I don't know if that's just because I live in Australia and we have pretty good consumer laws that sort of protect consumers in instances like that and give them, you know, some, some, some guarantees. Maybe any cubics, uh, maybe companies are more likely to give better customer support in some countries versus others based on things like that. All right, so we got four of those, four of those. So we got a pair of those, pair of those, two pairs of thighs, and we got those. 
excellent missiles. Need to fix those because they're not on the build plate. It's always something you want to check. Oh, fucking hell, these tools. Reset the Z to zero. They should now be good. All right, cool. Looks like everything fits. That's good. I might put a couple of the feet over here. That's good. Hell yeah. Oh, there's another one. That doesn't look right. Why is it bugging out like that? It's weird. It says that our first layer is just that, but uh, looking at the slice preview, our first layer is totally fine. I'm just going to come up here for sanity's sake. Set everything to zero. Okay. Slice. Layer zero. Yeah, layer zero looks great. We got our two torsos, feet, ankles, thighs, cannons, missiles. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to save that. We're going to send that to the printer. Alrighty, let's print this. Walkers, print. Let's do a real quick five second review of this printer. I like it. There's not much to say, really. I mean, I feel like there's not much to say about resin 3D printers these days. I mean, they're, they're all like pretty good. Until we see some like big improvements become more common, like heated vats, for example, or, or inbuilt ventilation systems with, you know, carbon filters and all that stuff. The pursuit of like higher and higher resolution, I think at this point, is just getting silly. Like this one's 14K and the cost of an aftermarket 14K LCD does concern me a bit. But that aside, the prints look phenomenal coming out of this. This is annoying. You know, it uses the same old like lid that you got to pick up and then find somewhere else to put it down. It's kind of annoying. The heater, I, I can't obviously test it because I don't have like an industrial fridge that I could run the printer inside of, um, which is kind of what I would need because it's so hot here in Sydney at the moment. Uh, there's no chance I can test it, unfortunately. But it, I did try running it for a little while and it did seem to make the interior of the, the printer hot because it does, it gives you a readout of the ambient air temperature inside the printer. And it did get up to 40 degrees. And what was interesting was that heat, when you've touched the enclosure from the outside, felt concentrated at the bottom where the vat is. So I thought that was really cool. It seems to be an effective heating solution. Obviously, I can't guarantee you that, um, but it does seem to be one. Obviously, you got the, the two linear rails in the back. Not the biggest lead screw, and I don't believe it's one of those fancy uh, ball screws. But, I mean, shit, for our purposes, it's fine. I'm not having any issues with that. I really love this new Anycubic user interface. Uh, it's nice and intuitive. Everything's in there that you could want. They've retained some good masking options for the exposure, which is good. You've got your vat clean. At the end of every print as well, there's a little option that asks you if you want to do a vat clean. So that's just a nice little extra detail that they've added. Obviously, there's a lot of intelligent features with this machine. The build plate has a bunch of sensors built in because the build plate's actually like floating in there. I don't know how to test any of that or verify if any of that is actually making our lives better. Uh, <laughs> so, I, yeah, that stuff is what it is. It's in there. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a good printer. I think depending how much it is, it might be a really great purchase. It's not too heavy either. And what's cool is down here on both sides is this like little cutout that's just perfect for, for getting in there with your fingers to pick this printer up. It's like they just they just thought of a bunch of really cool stuff, but then they also just did some weird shit like like this, because the, the, this thing requires a second power brick to run. So that's annoying. And then every time you put this lid on, you've then got to make sure that that cord lines up with that little notch there. See that? See that shit? In fact, let me show you whenever I put this lid on. See this? And, you know, so you're going to have to like reach behind the printer and just jiggle that or something or, you know, just make sure that when you put this on, that that's making, a, uh, you know, that that's finding its home in that little hole. Especially if you're needing to make use of the heater, you're going to want to make sure that that's not, you know, cracked open or something and letting, it, letting the hot air get out or whatever. So that's, it's just a crappy implementation, I think. Like, how hard would it have been? Oh, and this is the other thing that sucks about it is it's literally, <laughs> do you see this? It's literally just held on with like a sticky pad onto like here. There's, they could have put little electrical contacts here for power and data. And then that way there would be no need for this crap, the, no need for two power cables. And also then they'd be able to do some fun stuff where, you know, the printer can actually talk to this and maybe do things like when you hit start print, not start until this thing is reading a particular temperature. So, you know, they could have they integrated this better. Like, 
this is cool that it exists, but the fact that it's separate to the rest of the printer, it's just kind of an, it's just, it, it feels like, a, like an add-on that hasn't been fully thought through. The other issue I can see with this is, you know, imagine if you, imagine that you start a print and then you leave the house and the print finishes, maybe it takes a couple hours. And so the, the, the UV light's no longer on, the fan that's cooling the UV light is no longer on, the LCD is still gonna be on, and this is still gonna be on and it's still gonna be blasting hot air if you have the heater turned on. So, you know, it's just one more thing where if like these two things were integrated better and actually communicating with each other, the printer could say to this, hey, I'm, I've now finished the print, thanks for your hard work. And then this could be like, oh yeah, no worries, bro. I will, uh, I'll go to sleep now and turn off. So uh, we're getting closer, we're getting closer to what we need with this, but like, th yeah, this could be better. But yeah, I, I really like this machine. You know, there's a couple of other there's a couple of other cost saving things they've done that may or may not annoy you. Um, these aren't the best quality thumb screws. They feel a bit cheap. This is nice. I appreciate the the big the big build vat uh, knob on the top. I like that. This vat itself actually is quite nice. It's metal. And then it's got a couple of recesses in the sides, so you can actually get in, like it's easy to carry. You've got spouts in every corner, as well as max fill lines on the front and the back. So super good vat. USB on the side, obviously. Uh, I know some people don't like that. I'm not too fussed about it, but I could see how it would be really annoying if you had your printer in a tight space. There's so much room on the front. They could have put it on the front. So that's my review of the, uh, the Photon Mono M5S Pro. I like it, I recommend it. But yeah, obviously it's going to depend on your budget, right? And how much this thing costs. And also, yeah, do weigh into the equation of your buying decision, the cost of aftermarket parts, uh, specifically that LCD screen. I mean, the two main consumables here are the LCD screen and that ACF release film. That shouldn't be too expensive, but the LCD, 14K, 10 inches, I think that's going to cost you an arm and a leg. But it is a mono screen, so it's going to last you ages. Like, I, I'm, I still, I'm not the best example because I, I, at this point I'm going... At this point, I'm not using any printer for like any crazy length of time. Cause now it's like I finish a project or two with one printer and then move on to the next. Um, so I'm not getting, I'm not getting like heaps of print hours on any of my machines. But my, my Anycubic Mono X is still going on its original LCD. And that thing has done, God, just countless hours. That thing is just a machine and it's just, it just keeps going. Mad, mad respect to the uh, the Anycubic Mono X. The the Mono LCD in that is just is just going strong. It's kicking ass. It's a real champion. Yeah, Mono LCDs. They're such a huge improvement over the old RGB screens. Oh my god! Anyone who used those, you you know the pain. You know the pain. <laughs> so yeah, let's come back to this in a little while, and we'll see how it goes. Ooh, looking good. Check that out. It's always a little tricky to tell initially with uh, clear. Transparent resin, but looking at these closely, this looks like successes to me. So that's bloody outstanding. Love it. A couple of videos ago, I had someone someone go off at me in the comments section about like doing that. Sometimes you gotta do that. Maybe the resin you're using is, is incredible like this. Like see how that came off? That didn't shatter or anything. If you guys saw the last video uh, and sat through that entire thing, or if you have any decent amount of 3D printing experience, you'll know it's not always possible to get a spatula in under the supports and rotate it and pop them off. But um, yeah, some guy, you know who you are. <laughs> you just, you were like absolutely like horrified at the sight of it. But man, sometimes, sometimes that's, that's, that's what you got to do, you know? Anyway, look at that. These are, these are coming away beautifully. I, so far, I'm a really big fan of this resin. Like just the fact, like, like this is just always a good sign, you know, when stuff pops off the build plate like that and doesn't crack and shatter. It's just, it's so good. It bodes well for our, our future durability of our prints. And I mean, well, it's in the name. Ultra tough or whatever it's called. Also, it's totally fine to mar up your build plate. If anything, it makes your adhesion better. So like, this is cool. This is, this is character development. This is a grizzled build plate with a story <laughs> if you want to be artsy about it also i've had people complain at me seeing me remove prints from the build plate without gloves on i'm holding it here by this mounting mechanism for the uh for the watsi arm for the build plate carriage in the printer and this is something i treat as an always clean component i i do my darndest to never get resin on this or handle this with with a gloved hand that's come into contact with resin 
So to, in my mind, that's just an always clean thing that's safe to grab. And then I treat the handle of this spatula the same way. It's just an always clean thing. Yeah, it's probably not the best practice and you're right to criticize me for it as people will copy what I do. But if you've been 3D printing a while and you know what you're doing and you're not likely to make the mistake of touching an always clean component or item or tool with a dirty hand or whatever, you'll be all right. Let's get these washed and cured up. Okay, let's take a look here. Up. Oh. Oh, that was nice. Oh, that's bloody perfect. Good job. And then these are the missiles. Oh, outstanding, dude. Really nice. Wee hee. Now, this is the, the, the one. Oh, and it's actually done it. I'll see if I can show you this. This is super interesting. Can you see on the underside of that barrel how it's kind of, it's, it's like, it's like a, it's like, it's like a serrated blade almost because those support tips, like as they pull up that flat, that layer, that layer wants to bend between the supports. I hope that makes sense by just visually seeing it here. <laughs> but yeah, that's why you would take a part like this and you would angle it upwards. But I mean, it's still, this is still usable. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> this, this is cool. I'll still use it. Maybe, 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 maybe I could resupport these files and that'll be a once in a six side exclusive. Nah, because I'll give them to Sean and then he can put them on his My Mini Factory as well. Because you may want to buy the kit that includes the infantry. But yeah, for the most part, really, really outstanding job on these supports and just a fucking cool model too. So again, you can get these files right now on the buymeacoffee.com forward slash once in a six side membership area as well as YouTube memberships and patreon.com forward slash once in a six side. And again, uh, if you guys aren't sure, Buy Me A Coffee takes the smallest cut, followed by Patreon, and then followed by YouTube. I think Buy Me A Coffee is like 5 6%, something like that. Patreon's between 8 and 12%, and then YouTube takes 30%. But hey, I appreciate whatever you can do. And hopefully, you know, hopefully there is a, a level of support that you can provide on a platform that you're comfortable using that matches the level of value you feel you get from my videos. So let's finish popping all of these off the supports. These parts look... Pick that up in a second. <laughs> these parts look really good. It might be hard to see because of the, the transparent resin, but I'm seeing barely any, if any, like support scarring on these. Yet they still, they still hold on nicely. You know, they're not just like falling away. It takes a little bit of, a little bit of force to get them to come off. So Sean, you've nailed this, man. These are outstanding supports. Really, really great job. The only thing I would encourage you to do different is pay attention to this kind of thing. Don't, if you can avoid having a large surface area print parallel to the build plate, you do it, please. <laughs> Angle stuff like this. Yes, it's gonna take longer to print, but the final print quality is gonna be better. And the risk of total failure goes way down too. So aim your guns at the sky. Yeah, I love this resin, look at this. So this is obviously the uncured stuff. This still needs to be post cured, but look at these, these tiny little supports. Like, look at that. I could just bend them. Like this thing, this is just crazy. This is so good. And I think what we'll do, I'll cure up some of these supports as well. And we'll do that same sort of bending and see how it performs. But yeah, so far this resin is an absolute, absolute winner. Good job, Anycubic. Hopefully it's affordable. If it's affordable, that's going to be an easy recommendation. But there's all our parts. How good's that? Next step. Big fan of this Creality Wash and Cure. It's not perfect by any stretch. Like it's got some quirks, like everything, but it does the job and it does the job well. At the end of the day, is that not all we can ask from our products? No, we can ask so much more. <laughs> we can moan and we can complain and we can get, we can get shit done, right? We can influence, we can, we can compel them to do better and compete harder with one another. And then ultimately everyone wins. All right, so let's locate the unsupported cannon file. 
turret left and turret right. Now these are going to be identical, just mirrored, I believe. So what we can do is just support one and then mirror it. Save ourselves having to do the same work twice. So yeah, we'll just get rid of one of these. And so this is, I believe, the exact same orientation that they were supported in by Dungeons and Dreadnoughts. Let's have a look. So it doesn't look like it's exactly the same, but it's pretty close to it. Anyway, let's do a better job of this, shall we? Oh, we should do bases too, shouldn't we? One of the things you get as a channel member, you can get my collection of plain wargaming bases. And these are the best you're gonna find anywhere. They're nice and durable, they're simple, they're the right measurements, all that stuff. There's free packs, of course, on Thingiverse and you know printables and stuff, but the reason I made this pack is because I thought all the free packs were shit, and I even paid for a couple of packs, and I wasn't happy with those either. So, I don't know, you might not be as pedantic as me, but I found a lot of the bases out there, people just make them too thin and too weak, and it's just, it's not great. Uh, these ones, they're nice and durable, but I haven't supported them yet because I've just been printing them in filament with FDM machines. But hey, mate, let's let's set a goal. If uh, if if, uh, if we can get 25 members across all three membership options after posting this video, I'll go. I'll spend the time and I'll add supports to all of these. There we go. That looks good. Slice, looking good, looking very good. I don't think I've ever printed clear bases before. There's our new cannons. So yeah, this is cool. Check that out. We fucking did it. So yeah, see how like, because this whole turret is basically self-supporting, we only needed that one little support put on that island there. And those look outstanding. So let's, ah uh, yes. Maybe a bit of scarring here, but it's not too bad. If this is too much for you, you can use the LYS file and the little percentage adjustment thingy and dial it down to your taste and to your level of risk comfort. But for me, I'm totally happy with that. I think that's outstanding. Let's have a look at one of these bases. Been a minute since I've supported a base. That's perfect. That's really, really good. <laughs> That's really fucking good. Nice. I might, I might, I might, I might grab everything off the supports now. Yeah, I really like, really like this resin. That's just awesome. Great work, Sean. Great work, me. Let's get these cleaned. I want to show you something. Check this out. So this resin and also the way that these bases were supported is incredibly dimensionally stable. So if I rotate them, I don't know how easy it'll be to see, but like I can feel with my fingertips that the edges of these bases line up even when I spin them. So it's dimensionally accurate and there's not like really any noticeable warping that's occurred. Really, really nice. Right, so it's been a few days uh, now, hopefully you can see this. This has yellowed a tiny bit, really only noticeable on the big pieces, not so much the small pieces. Now, something interesting I've noticed with flexible resins is after a few days, they can become a bit more brittle. It's been a few more days now, so let's have a quick little go here. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm seeing a stress line, in fact, I think it's tearing actually, yeah. Can you see it? It's actually tearing, yeah, there it goes. Cr it felt like it crumbled more than it, more than it snapped. That's interesting. Let's try this one. God, that's still incredible, isn't it? Look at that.
What an amazing resin. Holy shit. <laughs> so like, yeah, it'll break eventually. Hang on. Ah, there we go. But it doesn't, it doesn't like shatter. It's more like, it feels like, uh, like plastic almost. It's kind of crazy. Like that'll just bend over completely. There we go, snapped off then. Here's a mini from the last video. You can see I can squish his legs together. Or I can... Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, that was a proper snap. I managed to snap his gun. Let's see if I can snap a leg off. It's not easy. <laughs> Fucker. Ah, can't do it. Hang on. Please, sir, leave me alone. It's for science. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> Did you see how much that bent before it broke? Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Like, twist it off. Yeah. Uh, this resin's a fucking 10 out of 10. Highly recommend it. Holy shit, I need more. Anycubic, hook me up. For comparison, this is the Anycubic Fast Resin. I hate this resin. Watch this. You hear that? Just shattered. So easily broken. This resin's so brittle, I could probably even do it with my hands, actually. Yeah, not a problem. So definitely don't recommend the fast resin for miniatures, but the tough resin ultra, fuck yeah. 10 out of fucking 10, that is such a good resin. You know how when you put sand down on a base with PVA glue and then inevitably, like, it's always going to be a little bit loose and there's going to be, this one hasn't fully dried yet. Inevitably, there's going to be little bits that flake off. It's just rarely a good stick. And now one of the things that's popular is people will come in with like a really watered down PVA to lock it all in. And that works great. Uh, I've enjoyed using this as well. This is UV resin. But the problem with using UV resin is it's super thick. And you can water it down with alcohol, but I think I've found a use for this crap. High speed resin. So this is absolutely terrible for miniatures. It's just, it's way too brittle, but listen to this. It's like water. So this might be perfect for this application. Look at that. Look how watery it is. Yeah, that's spreading pretty easily. Let me just take our UV light like this. And uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh no. <laughs> Fuck. Abort, abort. <laughs> Cure. Yeah, so that's now like fully locked in. 
um, but I <laughs> did screw up the edge a little bit. This one I'm not going to tip for the camera, so this should work well. Oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? All right, we're recording. I think we're recording. Let's let's do pro acryl, pro acryl. I'm also going to paint these up because we're gonna. I think we're gonna do a whole whole video on. Maybe this is not the best spot for this. Maybe like over here. I think yeah, we're gonna do a whole video on this resin. I think so. I want some shots to uh, show the detail that it is capable of reproducing because it's not just about being flexible, is it? Uh, we want durability, but we also want some level of detail there. And uh, I think the detail's there, but the best way to tell is to put some paint down. That's for sure. So yeah, Pro Acryl. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Got rabbit hair flying everywhere. No paint coming out of the thing. Why are you blocked? Let's try Steinle Res instead. Okay, that's looking good. That's looking pretty damn good. Very black. Very, very black. Not bad. You see now the scarring on the back of that cannon from my supports. Maybe that's a little much for you, but for me, I'm totally happy with that. Okay, let's get some highlight on this, dude. Matt White, Army Painter. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal Xenophil highlight paint. I I'm gonna stock up on this. Shout out to Tabletop Empires. They always include these handwritten notes and I can never read them. Hi James. Uh, hope we can assist again soon. Daniel. Cheers Daniel. Tabletop Empires is the only store I order from. Oh yeah, sandwich bag full of paint. Let's go. So I grabbed this as well. Uh, it's a lot cheaper per milliliter, so I'm not sure if it's going to be as good, but hopefully it's as good. New primer, scale 75. So that's cool. What's this? Oh, some matte blacks for doing base rims. Uh, finally got some of this stuff. The rest of you fuckers stopped buying it, so I could finally get some. That's good. Play with that. And we got metal color copper. How cool is that? They don't do a gold yet, unfortunately, but copper's a good start. See these? These are Vallejo transparent paints. And these do not get enough love. And I'm going to change that today. We're going to use these on those mechs. So I think we've got to do yellow and we've got to do red, I think. I don't know about orange, but what about smoke or wood grain? Interesting. Not sure. So I think what we'll do is we'll hit this guy with smoke and this guy with wood grain. And these can be, yeah, my little testers to know which way do I want to go. God, they look good, don't they? Smoke. So smoke is kind of like a milk chocolate. Now let's do wood grain. Okay, I would also describe this as a milk chocolate. <laughs> so maybe the other one's a dark chocolate, actually. Yeah, definitely milk chocolate. And this is dark chocolate. I, I, I like this. Maybe... Fuck it, let's do it. How often do you see miniatures painted brown? That is a really lovely colour, actually. It's kind of this like rusty brown orange thing. That's super nice. Hell yeah. Alright, let's do yellow now. This reminds me of Yale yellow, which if you've ever seen a forklift, you know it. Nice. Look at that. That's so yellow. Rather than make our last mech solid red or solid orange, we might have some fun with these and do a little bit of overlap. So I'm thinking, let's start with orange. Introducing a bit of that orange there to that yellow looks pretty good. 
And then this one from the top is going to be orange. Which looks a lot like the yellow, actually. And then last step, going to come in with this transparent red from the bottom on the orange one. Red, 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 red. So this might be a mistake. Interesting. Okay, but well that's that. Pretty cool. Alrighty. Compare the pair. Pretty interesting. Now the oddball is this brown one. Let's put some red in here, shall we? Let's try from the bottom first. It's pretty nice. Holy fuck. Oh, that's sick. It's subtle, but it's really cool. Hell yeah. I might even come back to this one and do some, some of this red. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so from here on out for the rest of this paint job, I kind of just threw shit at the wall to see what would stick. Uh, I started here with this Bulwack Brown from Army Painter. This is one of their air paints. And I used this as kind of like a highlight color on the brown mech. And then I decided to go a little bit crazy and treat everything up to this point as underpainting. Yeah, I wonder if we took something like Purple Alchemy and then went over the top of this, what kind of weird shit is that going to net? Big shout out to GRG Miniatures. Uh, that channel is one that introduced me to underpainting and underpainting is just such a fun way to paint. highlights. Now this is pale sand and I didn't modify it in any way for this yellow mech but for the other ones I added a little bit of green and purple. I, <laughs> forgive me I can't remember what colors exactly they were but just to like tint this paint a little bit more towards the uh, colors it's going on top of I find that gives a really good effect and that's all we need for some nice edge highlights. Now these mechs have these uh, like really recessed windows or screens on the front and I thought the best way to do this maybe is going to be oil paints and so I mixed up a sky blue using titanium white and cobalt blue Windsor & Newton oil paints got it nice and runny with some mineral spirits and that shit just worked like a dream and the cool thing about doing it this way is that any that does spill out where you don't want it you can just come back afterwards with a q-tip and clean that up To finish these bases off, I went with my favorite, simple, fast little asphalt technique of literally just painting them black and then dry brushing them with a gunmetal. And all that left was to paint the rims black and these mechs were done. So there's my paint job. It's pretty simple, but pretty effective, I think. Maybe one of these color schemes will give you some inspiration. But let's take a look at some other paint jobs because I thought it would be a good idea while producing this video to also run a print and paint on the Discord. And so a bunch of the Once in a Six Side channel members have also painted up these mechs as well as possibly some of the other miniatures too from Eldritch Tabletop and Imp 3D. And I haven't seen these yet. I've been refraining from looking. I've wanted to look so bad the last couple of weeks, but I've just I've, I've held off. And so, yeah, I'm going to jump onto the Discord now. I'm going to take a look at your paint jobs of these models for the first time. OK, let's do this. January STLs, print and paint. And I'm just quickly scrolling to the top, trying not to see anything. Oh my god, there's heaps. <laughs> Sick. All right, let's do this. Oh, there's our first one from Frazzled Dad. Still mulling over what to do with a base, but it may include a stomp non trooper because why not? Hell yeah, dude. I see you also went for the sky blue lenses. 
Very nice. I love the grimy sort of rusty look of this thing. That is a positively weathered mech. It's hard to tell, but the barrels too look very cool. Holy shit, look at this from Ben Fett. Oh, that looks so good. Dude, nice, really clean. I love the, you've highlighted the, these little armor panels in like a white or a light gray, and you've got this racing stripe and the weathering and like the, the battle damage. Dude, that is nice. And then look at the base too, holy shit. You went all out on this thing. Love it. Then we got another angle here. Yeah, this is a really nice paint job. Got the FDM printed base too, very nice. Economical, love that. <laughs> yeah, dude, fantastic. That's really clean, really nice. Oh, AGN, little progress shot. Check that out, hell yeah. Gone for red lenses. We've got these stripes, oh, the black and the this like khaki or this like off-white is really nice. And the weathering on the corners, super cool. Very nice, love that. Hell yeah, that's looking good. Another entry from Frazzle Dad here. Something's going on. What are we looking at? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> got missiles coming out of it. Nice. And then what's this? We got like a, a dead, <laughs> beheaded guardsman on the ground. Fuck yeah. And we got a better look at this weathering here too. Really nice stuff. Good job, Frazzle Dad. Oh, look at this one. It's running from Mr. Frankenfurter. Hell yeah. Good job. I like the I like the way you've posed the missile launchers too. It kind of helps add to that sense of uh, movement that they're not just like both aimed in the one direction. Ben Fett, the point of no return has been reached. That is, that's an oil wash for sure. <laughs> it's always a terrifying step. Man, Kanem, you've pinned everything. Good effort on that. I, I certainly couldn't be bothered pinning everything on this. Oh, here we go. All right, first pass of cleaning off the oil wash. Let's take a look here. Dude, nice. Yeah, that just added like a level of filth and grime that, yeah, that's nice. That sort of like ties everything together. Super good, love that. Yeah. Oh, we got a work in progress from Kanem. Super cool. Going for the light gray with the uh, blue accents and a bunch of weathering. Very nice. And then, ooh, you've gone with like glowing lenses. That's cool. Good, good idea, good way to handle that because it's fucking hard to paint these. Yeah, that's looking sick, especially like the the weathering and like the chipping and stuff down on these feet um, with the blue and the light gray. Yeah, looks really, really fucking cool. Ashby, nice. Got another light gray walker here with either black or gun metal. Bit tricky to tell. So nice weathering, plain base, that's okay. Very cool. And the red lenses and the red missiles too. Ah, oh, yeah, you went one missiles and one cannon. Nice. Yeah, really good job. That's a good looking mech. And then, oh, oh, same mech, I think. But this time uh, we've got a racing stripe. Nice. Yeah, that, that looks really good. Just that like that burst of color. Really, really nice. Good stuff. And Guile, nice. I like that, that sort of like dark blue gray. Simple, but nice. Yeah, and the white lenses, good, good job. And then the base is interesting. What is that, like a desert? Yeah, like a desert sand kind of base thing. Very intimidating, very uh, very imperial. Frazzle Dad's still going. <laughs> Hell yes, look at that, look at that mangled guardsman on the base, really nice. And then over here, we've got some cool rubble. Fuck yeah, that looks really good. Very nice. Yeah, the weathering on these looks really cool. Hell yeah, okay, this looks like the final shots from Kanem. Yeah, very cool. The like dust on the feet is really great. What is that, like pigment powder stuff? I gotta get some of that, that looks so good. The lenses look incredible. Oh, you've got like a little bit of edge highlighting on there. That's so good. I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that these little corner pieces were lenses um, or windows or whatever, but that, yeah, that looks great. Fuck yeah, dude, so good. Just the weathering and everything on this, super clean, super nice. Great job, Kanem. That is, that is some quality, quality miniature work. Really nicely done. And then, ah, we got the final shots from Ben Fett here now that his oil wash is dried. Oh, that looks so good. Hell yeah. And look at like the, the edge highlights on here, the stripe, the weathering, the battle damage, the the, the color choices. Like, the, this is so good, Ben. That's incredible. Well done. Holy shit. That looks so good. <laughs> I want to I wanna copy this color scheme now on the next thing I paint. Ah, it's so nice. Yeah, and look at the barrels too. Got like, oh, there's so much variation. You got the, the bright silver on the front and then it's like darks, gray, black, and then brown, orange, and light 
grey, blue. It's just ah, awesome. Really, really awesome. Ben Fett. Fuck yeah, man. And then Teach. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, look at that. It's so clean. Dude. Look at that. So nice. Oh, look at the bass. I love that. Is that a bass ready mix? I love bass ready mixes. I gotta get more. They're so good. Lenses look really nice. Fuck yeah. Interesting too, like uh, one of the spots where we see layer lines show up on this model is like sort of here and on the sides. Yeah, that looks that looks so good. And look at this little guardsman too, he looks quite nice. Is that an official one? I think that might be an official GW model, which is cool to see. I, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but if it is, that's cool because like, look how well it fits with this walker. <laughs> Fantastic. And then here's another angle of just the walker on its own. Yeah, I love this. The gray, the gunmetal, the red, the base. Yeah, this is like super clean, super simple, super effective. Really love this. Good job. And then Frazzle. Okay, all right, final shot. I think what we're going to do next time is uh, maybe we'll have two threads. <laughs> you guys can do progress shots in one and then just the final shots in the, the actual thread that I can react to. Yeah, really nice job, Frazzle Dad. These look sweet. Very nice. I love the missiles and the basing is great. Extra points for the basing with the dead guardsman. Very cool. And then, oh, look at this from AGN. That's looking sweet. Super colorful. Got the orange accents here and on the roof. Oh, with some little scratchy highlights. Nice. Love that. And you can see he's done some, some highlighting. Working up through different levels of brightness in the lenses. That's very cool. And then the orange here and the blue stripes and the, oh, the hazard stripes, yellow and black here. Very cool. Yeah, that's coming together. Oh man, you even painted the insides of those grills? Damn, that is that is patience. <laughs> Hats off to you, man. Another progress shot here. What's going on there? Some sort of um, a texture paste. Holy shit. Dude, Mr. Frankenfurter, look at that. Whoa, that is such a striking color combo. Love that. Yeah, that looks so good. Yellow and black. Edge highlights, yellow lenses too. <gasps> Dead Guardsman, blood and guts on the base. Very nice. That is such a good paint job. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Man, even that. How did you paint that? Did you, is that like um, speed paints? Or have you, you've come in here and you've done like edge highlights and shit on this guy too. Man, so good. That is such a good paint job. I'm just, I'm blown away. You guys, you guys really went above and beyond here. This is, this is amazing. So many good paint jobs from you lot. Oh, we got another one. Okay, so AGN, this is the, the, I guess the final, final photos from AGN. And damn, look at that. That is an interesting, interesting paint job. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's, uh, it's cool. It's fucking cool. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, 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 no words. Is it? Yeah, so it's like it's been sitting for a long time, right? And it's just rusting to shit from the ground up, I'm guessing. Super interesting effect. And uh, yeah, dude, phenomenal paint job. Really incredible. Super colorful. A lot of cool techniques here with the weathering, the edge highlights, the scratchy highlights. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> you know what it looks like? It almost looks like uh, like fried, like fried chicken legs or something. <laughs> and then we got another one. My God, there's so many. Odo. Hell yeah, Odo. I love this color combo of like red, red, white, and gray. Looks really nice, like a pastel red. Got some edge highlights on there too. Fuck yeah. Super simple, super effective. Love that. Really, really nice. And then Lapdog75. Oh damn. Oh, that's that's bleak. <laughs> Where did you find that sculpt? <laughs> oh man. Imagine how horrifying that would be. Please don't! <laughs> yeah, really cool. Love that paint job. Looks like you nailed those lenses too. Holy shit. And then oh, we got some uh, some some commissars just sort of standing by while this dude gets crushed. And then <laughs> this guy's sort of running over him. Lapdog went all out. He did the sorceress and the plague rat man guy. Fuck yeah, look at that. <laughs> the the rat plaguer and the sorceress. Good job, man. Oh, we got one from Newman. Very cyberpunk from Newman. Hell yeah, man. Not bad. Simple, but effective. All you gotta do, man, is just come in here and do some edge highlights to this thing. Don't even spend five minutes on it. 
and it's just going to take it to the next the next level. It's going to look great. Not that it doesn't already look great. And I'm just noticing as well. You 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 sort of you couldn't pick between cannons and missiles. You had to have it all. And so you've you've <laughs> you've given this thing all the DACA. <laughs> Super cool. Good job. And that's it. That's all of them. All right, man. Thank you everyone who contributed one of those. It was fucking awesome to go through just now and see all of your paint jobs. I can't believe how many there were. Fucking hell. <laughs> Okay, there might be a couple more late entries here. I'm just going to quickly check and... Oh, oh, yes. Okay, Frazzle Dad with the Ratman. The uh, the cloak looks really nice, like the purple. Super cool. You've got like the oozing, oozing stuff coming out of the thing, the vat. <laughs> so let's imagine it's resin. He's, he's walking around blasting, blasting his foes with toxic resin. <laughs> Really nice. Cool. Thank you, Frazzle Dad. Yeah, I think uh, I think we'll do this every month. If this works out to be a win-win arrangement and artists wish to continue to donate files for you guys, then yeah, we can do a print and paint every month and I can react to them just like this. And I think that'll be a, a, a fun, a fun thing to do. So, all right, if you've made it this far in the video, please do head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash once in a six side or patreon.com forward slash once in a six side where you can get these models right now as well as get access to this wonderful Discord server. And yeah, huge fucking thanks to Dungeons and Dreadnoughts, Eldritch Tabletop, and Imp3D. You guys are amazing. I can't thank you enough. I, I, I'm optimistic and hopeful uh, that this this thing here of donated files and then easy to make videos like this every month, I think I think it's going to be a winning, winning combo. I'm hopeful. Anyway. All right, I'm going to wrap this video up here. We'll be back again really soon with uh, something else. Yeah, do look forward to next month. I know some some things, some things are happening. I don't have words. I should be scripted. Uh, all right.